Hey guys, welcome to the Dog Father's Barbecue YouTube channel. Hey, if you're new here, welcome. Consider clicking on that uh, subscribe button down there and uh, stay up to date with what we're doing here. If you're already subscribed, what's up, Dog Pound? Hey, so I'm the Dog Father, and uh, hey man, uh, you know I got a little uh, special treat for you. The other day we had the opportunity to uh, go down and uh, meet a pit master that I met a few weeks ago. Uh, a few weeks back, I was privileged enough to uh, be invited over to go hang out with a bunch of uh, pit masters from all over Central Texas, and uh, I met this guy, Luis Vasquez. Uh, he owns uh, Luis Barbecue in Buda, Texas. So uh, we took a little trip down to Buda to go hang out with Louis, and uh, man, just to see what he has to offer. And it was a pretty special trip. He's a special kind of guy. So uh, I think you guys are going to enjoy this uh, hangout session with Louis. So. No further ado, here's Louie. What's up, Dog Pound? This is Louie Vasquez. This is my food truck, Louie. Let's get it. Louis, Louis Vasquez. Uh, my actual real name is Luis Vasquez. Ever since I grew up, everybody called me Louis. Born and raised Austin, Texas. Uh, one of home. This is my story, so I'll kind of tell it real quick. But um, grew up not knowing how to cook. Uh, um, got married, still didn't know how to cook, and uh, I would get home before my wife, and so I would start making dinner, and it was usually just like easy meals, like pizza in the oven and hamburger helper. Then uh, then it came, became real that I needed to figure out how to make a real meal. So I started calling my mom and asking her how to make uh, carne guisada, like Mexican dishes that she was making, enchiladas, caldo, caldo de res, and you know, just the typical Mexican dishes that we would eat at home. And then the more that I would cook, basically the more I just found it more therapeutic and the more I loved it, it was just in the, in the kitchen, you know, an hour, two hours cooking, cooking a meal, and I found that I loved it. Um, probably, I wanna say maybe like five years into being married, my mother-in-law asked me if I could make a, bri or actually if I could make briskets for my father-in-law's birthday party. It was gonna be a surprise birthday party. I joked with her and I was like, how do you want me to make this brisket? And she said, uh, I want you to smoke it. I wasn't into barbecue at the time. I was just cooking in the kitchen at, at home. And I thought, at the time, I thought she wanted me to make it like in a slow cooker or something. So uh, she's like, I want you to make it uh, like barbecue brisket. And I laughed at her and I was like, you know how long it takes to make and master a brisket? Like it takes years for somebody to figure that out. So she's like, well, you're a good learner. You're a quick learner. See if you could learn how to do this. So I was like, okay. A neighbor, he lived probably about three or four houses down. He had a smoker in his front yard every weekend. I walked over to his house and I said, hey bud, can I borrow your, your smoker? You don't know me, but my name's Luis uh, or Louie. I live down the street. And he's like, sure. Uh, what are you making? in my smoker and I said well I've got a surprise birthday party my mother-in-law wants me to make briskets I don't know anything about smoking any any food and he kind of laughed he's like how about I, I teach you how to do it my way and I'm like alright let's do it so uh, he pulls the smoker over this is like two or three months later I tell him when the party is and he pulls over the smoker and we season the briskets we saran wrap them and he's like Throw them in, the, in your refrigerator, and in the morning, we're gonna start cooking. I'm like, all right. Take them out, take the saran wrap off, throw them in the smoker. We do like a 12 hour smoke on them. Right towards the end of the smoke, he's like, I'm gonna show you how to probe a brisket without checking the temperature. And I was like, okay. So he pulls out a thermometer, and he's like, all right, check this brisket right here. And we probe it, and we slide in the, uh, the thermometer, and it still had some, some give to it, like it was a little tough. And he's like, all right, poke this one. Okay, so we poked the other one. He said, it's still not ready. I'm like, all right. So we wrap them in foil and all through the night, we're there probing that brisket and they're still not ready. Every time we would probe it, he would tear off a piece of foil and he would plug the hole where, the, where we had probed it at. And I was like, what are you doing? 
and he's like, um, all the juices are coming out. That's, you know, we got to plug in that little hole where the juice is coming out. I'm like, all right. By the end of the night, it looked like a Hellraiser brisket because it's got all these little foils sticking out of the brisket. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. I've never, I've never seen anybody make a brisket. I didn't even know who Franklin's was at the time. I was just like, okay, let's, we're doing it your way. Let's do it. Probably like at 10 in the morning, the briskets were done. We threw them in an ice chest, covered them up. The party wasn't until about four or five o'clock. By the time we get to the party, we take these briskets out and man, they're like butter. We're slicing them. They're just like, it's not like pot roast, but it was super tender. There wasn't, I don't even think there was any brisket left over after that party. My father-in-law, it was, he loved it. Probably about six months later, he calls me up and he says, hey, uh, bring your truck, I got something to give you. I'm like, oh, okay. And I pull up and I see this beaten up old smoker in his front yard. I'm like, oh, he bought himself a smoker, that's kind of cool. And I go inside and he's like, what'd you think? And I'm like, think about what? And he goes, bought that smoker outside him. I'm like, it's pretty cool, it needs some work, but it's pretty cool. And he goes, it's yours. And I was like, why? He says, uh, I think you have a career in barbecue. And I'm like, I work at, I work at Progressive. I work for an insurance company. Been there for like, you know, it was at, the, at that time it was probably like 12 years already in, into it, 10 years, something like that. I was like, why would you think I was going into the barbecue business? He's like, you made that food and it was amazing. I think everybody would like that. You should, you've always talked about getting the food truck. You should try it. I have a guy that, uh, he helped me fix that pit. It didn't have a, a smoke box on it, so he added a smoke box. We took off these uh, two inch chimneys that it had on e each side. We just put one stack on, the, on one side. Saturdays, I was emailing and texting my friends and asking them, hey, you guys wanna buy some brisket? 75 bucks gets you a whole brisket. And I would get orders Friday and Saturday. Friday morning, I'd wake up, start the fire, throw in the briskets. By the end of the night, they were ready and I'd had people picking them up. And, uh, church that I, was that I go to now, which is a Christian Life Church on 4700 Westgate Boulevard. Um, one of the guys found out I made briskets there and he said, hey, Louie, you think you can make briskets for our Bible study? And I said, sure. You know, how many briskets do you need? He's like, we need for 100 men. I'm like, Okay, I had never cooked for 100 men before, and I was like, all right. So I made the briskets, they loved it. And there was an individual there at the church that asked me, where's your restaurant at? And I said, I, I don't have a restaurant. And he's like, oh, well, where's your food truck at? And I'm like, I don't have a food truck either. And he said, uh, so you do this on the side? And I said, yeah, and he goes, bro, you need to have an establishment, like something. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not, right now, I'm. I'm not in a financial means to have anything, but it's always been a dream of mine. And he's like, well, I can help you with that dream a little bit. I'll pray for you. And I was like, okay. And I'm like, that's fine. That prayers work. So uh, he would see me every Sunday and he would always ask me, how's that business going? You know, I'm praying for it, but nothing's, it's not getting anywhere right now. And he's like, okay. So at one point he asked me, what's it going to take for you to get your food truck open? And I said, well, I've been looking at it a little bit further. I wanted to turn a storage container into a food truck. And at that point it was like 2,500 bucks to get one empty like an empty shell he's like okay let's keep praying about it i'm like okay two weeks later he comes to church and he's like hey louie how you doing i'm like i'm good he goes come here real quick i said okay what's up he said you know i talked to my wife and uh we want to bless you with something i'm like okay he's like here and pulls out a check for 2500 dollars, and he says go get your business started and i was like wow that's crazy you know, um, who does that? Like, who gives you money out of the blue like that? So that's basically where it started. I didn't cash the check right away. What I ended up doing was uh, I did some research on pits and uh, wanted to kind of, I wanted to get the pit first because I thought I could do pop-ups and then just kind of pay for the pit at the same time, but also um, get money going so I can get the food truck going. And that's basically how it started. We, uh, we did pop-ups at Onion Creek Volkswagen for a little while. Uh, a friend of mine, he owns that place, uh, him and his dad. It's uh, CJ Barnett, 
And I want to thank him for giving us the opportunity to be there too. Anytime we would pray for something, it would just basically turn around and happen like within a week or two. We needed something like, we needed, uh, I don't know, an appliance or something. We needed to pay a bill. We'd pray for it and bam, it was there. And it was because of, not just because we were praying, but also because like we'd get customers asking for, you know, caterings and events and parties and all that happened. It just, it was just a snowball. Uh, we started on Rainy Street. It was fun for a while, but I served at church, and so it was hard to wake up at, you know, leave the food truck at four in the morning and then wake up at seven to go to church and serve at church and be like a zombie. So, uh, you know, I prayed that we found a different location that actually gave me Sundays off. So then we moved, uh, we moved to Brody, and then we were there for about eight months, I think. And then uh, we moved, after Brody, we moved to South Congress. And that was a good spot, but then they ended up doing a lot of uh, construction in the area. And it kind, of, it kind of fizzled out after a while. A lot of homeless were coming by, and I think it deterred a lot of customers that were in the area. And it got me to the point where I was kind of pressed because we were so slow. I mean, we were probably making like two briskets a day and sometimes we, would, we weren't even carrying, I mean, we were carrying some briskets over like to the next day, which was pretty sad. Um, I, wasn't ma I was basically making enough money to cover my rent and food costs. Uh, I wasn't getting paid at all. Um, if, I, if I was paying anybody, it was like a helper to come in every once in a while to come help. And so right towards the end of the year, I needed to make a decision if I was going to stay there or if I was going to leave. And uh, I talked to uh, Brett from Brett's Barbecue, talked to uh, several people, Willow from Houston, uh, John Brotherton, Joey uh, Victorian, uh, Kyle Stallings from uh, Rolling Smoke. And they all pretty much just said you know don't give up you know just keep going keep doing what you're doing I mean there's a reason why you're at where you're at we all struggle we all you know we all put put in the work and sometimes you don't see the the benefits until the end but just keep pushing through and you'll you'll see something happen so uh, Brett kind of mentioned you know maybe you should go on the outskirts like get away from the big city um, and I noticed there's man there's like a food truck and on every corner the street we were on there was four barbecue spots within a quarter mile of each other. Um, it was me, um, Garza's Grubs, Leroy and Lewis, and then there was a Texas Ranch. So we were all pretty much in a real tight circle. And uh, if you know anything about business, you know that once you already have a client and you've hooked them in, it's hard to win that person over because they already have their favorite, like if they have their favorite brisket or favorite rib or favorite dish, it's hard to pull them you know, to your side. I figured I'd go somewhere basically where there was no barbecue and limited food trucks. And pretty much this is where we're at. We're in Buda. Um, beautiful weather out here, small town. Um, we don't really have a lot of competition right now, but I don't want anybody moving out here. <laughs> but yeah, that's where we're at. Oh yeah, uh, so Daniel Vaughn, he came when I was on Brody, this is probably a little over a year ago, probably a year and a half ago, um, he comes up and like I said, when I started barbecue, I didn't know anybody in the barbecue world. I just knew that I got hooked on making barbecue. And so uh, he comes up to my window and I have no idea who this guy is. I'm getting a text on my phone and it's from Jimmy Ho from uh, The Smoking Ho on Instagram. And he's like, hey, Daniel Vaughn's at your trailer. Oh, no, he goes, uh, uh, the barbecue snob's at your trailer. And I'm like, who's the barbecue snob? And he's like, you don't know who barbecue snob is? And I'm like, I have no idea who that is. He's like, Google it. He didn't even tell me. He's like, just Google it. I'm like, all right. So he had already ordered, and I'm like trying to hurry up to Google. And it says uh, he's the, the uh, editor for Texas Monthly. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Well, I had already, I had given him some some barbecue, I gave him a baked potato, I think he ordered sausage and uh, some brisket. And he, he specifically asked for lean brisket. And uh, the lean brisket I served him, it was kind of tough and I knew it, but I didn't know who he was. And at the time I was just trying to get food out. And uh, now I know if it's not ready, it's not ready. But I told him, I said, you know, after you left, I wish I would have told you 
we don't have any more brisket right now because the last brisket I had was like this big 18 pound monster that I thought was ready and it wasn't ready. So uh, he came like two weeks ago. We hadn't had anybody at the window yet and I heard somebody step on our step and I looked and he peeks in he's like, hey, what's up? And I said, I'm ready for you. <laughs> And he kind of smiled and he's like, what are you talking about? And I said, I remember you came last time and I wasn't ready for it. I didn't even know who you were. And he's like, oh, I didn't expect you to know who I was. I was like, but still, like, I felt, I felt almost guilty giving you the food that I gave you, knowing who I know who you are now. And he's like, no, no, don't worry about it. So he came and uh, I didn't even know he was, uh, he probably was recording me on his phone because he wasn't writing anything down. He was just eating, but he was asking me questions. And when, when he left, I was just like, oh, cool, he came and visited me. Maybe he'll come back and ask me to do a story. And then I think that a couple days later, uh, somebody tagged me on the post, and I was like, oh, wow, he did a, he did a whole write-up on me. I didn't even know that. And I read the whole thing, and I was like, how did, he even, how did he even write that without writing anything down? And I'm like, oh, he had his phone. He probably just recorded it, and I didn't, I didn't even catch it. But I was ready for him. Um, we had food ready to go. Uh, ribs, the beans. He ordered. I actually, I, I just gave him a, a platter of, of everything. Um, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty nice write-up. Nice. Loved it. Yeah. The whole meetup. It's, it's cool. It's a, it's a, it's a great way to show people that, uh, that we're a family. Um, it's tight niche. Uh, it's a good way to kind of reach out to people that you normally wouldn't have seen, you know. Uh, the guys from uh, Miller Smokehouse made it all the way down here, uh, which is surprising because it's a, a, it's a bit of a drive, but I loved it. Michael Wyant came out here, that's a bit of a drive. Uh, but it's all about brotherhood, and uh, I'm glad to know all these guys. If I ever need help, uh, I give them a call. Um, I bounced a ton of ideas between Joey and John Brotherton. Um, any kind of help that I need, I usually will give them a call or text them, and you know they're more than willing to help us help me out. And likewise, I've had people call me, and uh, which kind of reminds me, uh, Brett before he started, he was asking me uh, how many briskets I was going through through the day, and this is before he had started his. Uh, his trailer and at that point I was right in the middle of going through my slow season so you know I was kind of embarrassed to say how many briskets I was going through and at that time I think I was going through maybe like three or four briskets in a day and he's like oh okay you know I, I, I can probably run that in Rockdale you know he didn't know what kind of business he was gonna do his opening day it turned out to like be like 20 25 briskets and I'm I'm like laughing I'm like this guy calls me for advice and then I'm like dude you just killed it you know I got to call you for advice now which I did I called him and he you know he basically told me he's like recommended me coming out to Buda he's like I think it's a good idea if you come out there there's you know that's what I did there's not he's like if you ask anybody what's in Rockdale they're like Brett's barbecue and I'm like okay so it became a destination spot. He's like, make, make Buda a destination spot. Make it be where like, hey, have you ever heard of Louis? They're like, yeah, he's in Buda. So that's what we're trying to do here. Yeah. My secret talent? Barbecue aside. Uh, I draw, paint, and I play the saxophone every once in a while. Who plays Louis? The Rock. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I don't know. Um, you know, I always forget what his name is, but he came on the movie. Uh, man, what is it called? He was filmed in Austin. It's the chef, the guy that came on Chef. Forgot what his name is. Um, he's a, he's a director too now. You've, have you ever seen Chef? Man, what is his name? John Favreau. Yep. Google it. <laughs> Uh, 80s and 90s country. I listen to pretty much anything. Uh, Christian music, gospel. Uh, I like Casa Garcia's in Austin on William Cannon. I like different places. In fact, me and my wife just found Bo Seafood, which is a food truck. 
and it was amazing. Um, we ordered shrimp and crawfish. It came with uh, some slaw, some lime slaw, and French fries. And then we ordered crab cakes on the side. Man, that thing was top notch for, I mean, seafood was like fresh. Um, they served some kind of sauce. I'm not sure if it's their own tartar sauce, but it was amazing. Okay. Yep. So the last thing I Come out. Um, you know, we got, we got a, a little bit different things. Uh, we'll be adding some new stuff here pretty soon. Um, probably like pork chops and uh, smoked turkey. We used to do smoked turkey a lot at our old location, but uh, moving here, we don't have the space right now in our refrigerator. We're actually gonna add another refrigerator to hold more meat, more product. But uh, we've got a secret menu, and you probably already heard, we've got a uh, potato called the Dreamer. It's a two meat with uh, mac and cheese on the bottom and all the toppings we've got. So that one's called the sleeper. Then we got the dreamer, which is a three meat. And then we've got the TKO, which is a, a four meat uh, potato. So uh, I challenge you to eat that whole thing in one sitting. We had one guy call, or he text me and he's like, hey, it took me two hours to eat that dreamer, but I got it done. And he ordered a TKO the other day. So I'm curious to know if he even finished that whole thing or not. So, yep. Come on out.